video, I'm going to be showing you how to work out both the gradient and the y-intercept of a straight line when you're given the equation. So hopefully you've already heard of this, y equals mx plus c. This is just the format of a straight line equation that we use so that we can easily identify the gradient and the y-intercept. So the gradient is usually represented by the letter m. And remember, the gradient is just how steep the line is. So if this was a very big number, it would mean a very steep line that would look like that. And if it was a much smaller number, it would be much flatter. And c, the y-intercept, is just where the straight line crosses the y-axis. So if it crosses the y-axis and the y-coordinate is 5, c would be 5. So in this first example, the equation is already organised in the right order, y equals mx plus c. So m, the gradient, is just the number in front of the x. So in this one, m, the gradient, is 3. And c, the y-intercept, is just the number by itself. So in this one, is positive 4. In this one here, it's still saying y equals, which is good, but the x is over here and the number's over here. So remember, to find n, you've got to work out which number is in front of the x. Well, there isn't actually a number in front of the x. You have to remember that there's an invisible 1 here. So the gradient is, in fact, minus 1. And the y-intercept, again, is the number by itself. So the number by itself is positive 5, therefore the y-intercept is also positive 5. In this one here, I can see the gradient, but there's no number by itself. The gradient is the number in front of the x, so m is minus 8. But because there's no number by itself, so c, it means the c value must be 0. So this straight line, this one here, it crosses the origin. It passes through the origin, the point 0, 0. That's why the y-intercept is 0 and there's no number by itself. In this one here, it's the other way round. This time, there's no x term. So it's like saying plus 0x. So that's why we didn't bother writing the 0x. So the gradient of this line is 0. But the y-intercept, the number by itself, is 4. So this one here, this line, it would look something like this. It would be a horizontal line that intersects the y-axis at positive 4, and that's why the gradient is 0, because it's a horizontal flat line. Now, in the last one, it looks a bit harder, but it's actually not, because it's already organised into y equals, except y is on the right-hand side instead of on the left. But because it says y equals, it's exactly the same method, and m, the gradient, is the number of x's. So the number in front of the x, well, you have to remember there's an invisible 1 there that we don't normally write. So the gradient is positive 1. And the number by itself is this one here. So c, the y-intercept, is negative 3. Okay, now I'm going to do a few harder examples where we need to rearrange the equation first. So remember, before we can pick out the gradient and the y-intercept, the equation needs to be in this format, y equals mx plus c. So in these equations, none of them say y equals, so we need to rearrange the equations first. In the first one, I need to move that positive 5x to the other side of the equation so that y is by itself. Now remember, when terms move across the equal sign, they change sign. So if they used to be positive, they change to a negative and vice versa. So this equation becomes y equals negative 5x and that 1 hasn't moved, so it's still positive 1, so I write plus 1. Now that I've rearranged the equation to get y equals, I can spot the gradient and the y-intercept. Remember, the gradient is the number in front of the x value, so n is minus 5, and the y-intercept, c, is the number by itself, so in this one it's positive 1. Likewise, in the second one, we need to rearrange the equation, so I need to move that negative 3 to the other side of the equation, so remember, when it moves, it changes to a positive 3. So the equation becomes y equals 
7x hasn't moved, so that's still there, it's still positive, but that negative 3 changes to plus 3. Now I can see m and c. m is the number in front of the x, so positive 7, and c is positive 3, the number by itself. Now, this one's even harder. This time we've got to move more than one term to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to move all of that over to the right so that I'm left with y on the left hand side. This positive one changes to a negative one. This negative two x changes to positive, so I write plus two x. And this six didn't move, so it's still positive, so I'm going to write plus six. Now, I'm going to simplify this equation a little bit because I've got a number here and a number here, so I'm going to add those together. So, if I simplify that equation underneath, minus 1 plus 6 is 5, the 2x doesn't change, and now it's in the y equals mx plus c4. So, I can see that m, the gradient, the number in front of the x is positive 2, and the y-intercept, the number by itself, is here, is positive 5. Now, on to example number 4. This time, we've got 2y. Remember, it has to be 1y equals mx plus c. So I need to get rid of this 2. So the opposite of multiplying by 2 is to divide by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2 because that will make that 2 disappear because 2 divided by 2 leaves me with 1y. But if I divide by 2 here, I have to do the same thing throughout my equation. So let me write down what happens when we do that. So here I've already told you that's going to cancel. 10x divided by 2 is 5x. And 5 divided by 2, that's going to give me a decimal number, which is 2.5. So, m, the gradient, is here in front of the x, so that's positive 5. And the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, is positive 2.5. Now, one more to finish. Alright, so in this last one, we've got a couple of steps before y is by itself. When we look at this first part here on the left-hand side, I can see that y plus 3x is being divided by 4. So I need to get rid of this fraction. I need to get rid of the 4. And the opposite of dividing by 4 is multiplying. And remember, when you do something to one side of the equation, you have to do the same thing throughout. So I'm going to multiply everything in this equation by 4. So on the left-hand side, where I do the opposite, they just cancel each other out, and I'm left with y plus 3x. And on the right-hand side, when I multiply by 4, well, 1 times 4 is just 4. So the equation becomes y plus 3x equals 4. Now it's just like the ones from the beginning. I need to move that positive 3x to the other side, so it's going to change to a negative. And on the left, I'm left with y equals, so I've got negative 3x. The 4 hasn't moved, so it's still positive, so I write plus 4. And now I can pick out m and c. m is the number in front of the x, so in this case it's negative 3. And c, the y-intercept, the number by itself, is 4, positive 4. Okay, so now you know how to work out the gradient and the y-intercept of a straight line when you're presented with the equation.